YouTube, Erica Linear, welcome back to another video. We're in South East gift shop right now, down here in Miami, and we are building a boat today. But not just any boat, this is gonna be my brand new super skip. I can't wait to bring you guys with us, so let's go check it out. Hi, how are you? Good morning. This, I had these guys for two weeks wet sanding inside this thing like a hot tub after we made it. It's already gel coated and skinned, oh, so cool. we're gonna lay everything up. So you can kind of see how yeah, the process how... is. Like all the hull strakes, right. we put structural glass, mm -hmm. and then we put putty in over that. And then when we laminate, there'll be structural glass, core structural glass, and that's uh, because I've, I've heard stories. When boats get over like 40, 50 miles an hour, they can, hull strakes are ripped off. They just do them with mat, and like, yeah, we don't, we don't need that's that. That's why you gotta like reinforce it. This is the front hatch we're working on right now. Oh, I saw y'all working on that. Yeah, so that just, awesome. but you can see how big it is. Yeah, that thing's massive. <laughs> yeah, but, so the gutter. Yeah, the, so water can run in there. And primer, so you'd be able to dump like a five gallon bucket of water on this thing. Perfect. We won't get any inside there. How do I get this off? Oh, that's Oh, damn, it's an extra large. I got an extra large. Yeah. yeah. You have like duct tape on your pants? Sock. over your head. Perfect. Perfect. Exactly like that. Good. So as we go, it's a wet mill gauge, so we want to be around 26, 27. Okay. How thick it is. Okay. So right now it's not reading anywhere within here. Oh. I need it to get right there. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm searching every one of these little holes. Big 
I'm always covered. You just made that look so good. Oh, so this is the cat. Okay, cool. Alright, so the cap of the skiff is already done. So Lewis, tell me what like we did here. Like what's the difference between the black and the white? This is carbon fiber. Okay. This is 12K, it's uni, so it's one way. Okay. When we build our decks, we do the core a little bit thicker than uh, most boats. We do three quarter. It's okay. stiffer. So if you notice in the skiff, there's no bulkhead in the front for deck support. Right. So I always add carbon fiber. There's one below the core, there's one above. Okay. It's like an ivy. Right. It has a stiffener and it's not that much weight. Yeah. On yours, we add a second one uh, to give it a little bit more stiffness. We, yeah. we dial back the laminate, um, our little experiment on your boat, to drop a little bit of weight. This part of the cap, you know, it's very thin. Right. It's all supported by the boat, but uh, we're like, right, let's put it in anyway. So this is uni going this way. Okay. So it's gonna add a lot more stiffness. So it has two layers of uni in it as well. Um, and it's gonna provide more stiffness. That's awesome. Like even in the original one, the, the, um, the sturdiness, like there is no flex in the boat at all. Like, even, we, even from the last that's one. That's why so we did already see that's why we that's did three quarter. It's gonna be just sturdy, but lighter at the same time yeah. is gonna just be a win-win. So what we're trying to do is remove the weight off the top of the deck. Right. Right. Okay. Leave it down low in the boat so it's not as tippy. Right. right. In theory. Right. <laughs> and uh, it's better ride in the boat when the weight's low. Correct. Um, also on your hull, we're gonna do some things differently. We're gonna change the lamination schedule. Okay. We're gonna core the hull side so it'll be quieter. Nice. Right. Yeah. Uh, better for fishing. Right. Right. Um, and then that way, because we're coring it, we can go to a thinner laminate as well. We're just trying to get the weight down because you fish with a trolling motor. So yeah. Trolling motor. There's a battery. There's gonna be a console. Right. There's gonna be a lot of added weight. So we're trying to counteract that. Right. Cancel Perfect. it out. So yeah. Weigh the same. Uh -huh. So you can still pull well. Right. Um, Perfect. And have I mean, all the win -win. other accessories. Yeah, cool. Right. And now, and now, technically, this is the underside, so this is in the mold right now. So once this gets pulled out, you'll see the the, the bottom side of this will actually be the top of the boat. We build it backwards. <laughs> it's be a lot more trimming. It's gonna be good. This is so awesome. So cool seeing the boat coming along. So what are they doing right now? So we have templates for the hull. Okay. Wood there. They have them out, and they put them down. This is a. Uh, our skin coat, our mat. So that's this is the first thing that goes against the gel coat. Okay, I got you. So this so, is where you like roll on the little pieces. Is that right? Exactly. So these are pieces, and they'll trace them out. So we have gotcha. the bottom, the sides, the transom. Cool. And then uh, we tear them in a little bit smaller pieces. Okay. To look, make them a little bit more manageable. Gotcha. And then. Uh, We'll put that down. We'll use resin. We do it by hand. We don't use a wet outcome because you see it sprays everywhere. Right. We're not trying to like inhale all that <laughs> stuff. So we just we do it in small batches. Uh, the boat's small enough, and then we <clears throat> we roll that out. We get the initial skin coat done, and then next day, day after, we'll lightly scuff. Okay. Get a little some prickly sticking up. Yeah. And then we'll load up the main laminate, all structural glass, the core, and everything. Uh -huh. So it'll be like this. It all goes in dry, and then we'll put our flow media. Peel ply, bag. Right, and then that's where you do all tape, the piping. Yeah, all so. the plumbing gets done, Crazy. and we pull it under vacuum for that's 24 so hours. Awesome. And if all the everything checks out, no leaks, we go to fill up all the resin. It's like such a process. It's crazy. We made these a long time ago. <laughs> okay, what other words? Yeah, add 16. This is. <laughs> the best mat in, it's all made in China, but this is the best mat you can buy. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier to roll out the bubbles. Yeah. This is one ounce chop strand mat. Mm -hmm. So, and then with your boat, we're gonna do a second skin. So it does, okay. with the coring, it takes an extra day. Okay. Two guys of labor. And then we put in our glass dry core with glass over it. It just, it changes things a little bit. In my previous life, it was T-tops. Yeah. So I was all about putting shade on boats. It wasn't necessarily, well, I mean, for big fishing boats, T-tops are between the towers. Yeah. So this is just rough cut. So we look out, so you can see 
Oh, wow, well, yeah. So these are stringers, uh -huh. right? Right, right, so that's what you're talking about. Yeah, and these are weep holes, right? So they can drain water. Okay. Um, if anything gets outboard. There's a bulkhead here, which also has weep holes, and there's another bulkhead. So it'll, any water comes through the bilge you go into here, mm -hmm. you go into that box. We have a cover for it, so you can get to That's where all the bilge pumps will be. Right, right. Um, if you so really cool. shine down in there, you see the knees going back to the transom. Oh yeah, I see those. Um, just extra strength, and then this adds a lot of strength, so. Dude, these things are so solid. Uh, it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be. Indestructible. There's no flex at all. So we have so a bulkhead in the deck there. Uh, the owner just brought the fuel tank. There's a lot of space. So the way that a hatch is designed, when you open it, you will not see the fuel tank. And uh, right, this, this is area, so much room in there. Yeah, that's what you said. I mean, like you could. <laughs> Lewis is gone. <laughs> when Chris designed this boat, it's basically it's a super skiff for the 21st century. Right. Right. Because Americans are eating a lot more cheeseburgers now. They're getting a little bit larger. <laughs> Um, they need room for all their extra large life no, jackets. You need displacement because they're getting <laughs> oh, heavy. Oh, true. All right, I'm talking about they're getting fat. Americans are getting fat. <laughs> true. So with a trolling motor and two guys on the front, that's why he did it's the plumb gonna bow. It's going to be like fate. That, that's why he did the plumb bow. So you have flotation. That's why there's so much boat in the water here, not a long swoop. The whole premise of this boat is to fish aggressively. And, <laughs> right up my uh, alley. <laughs> you know as user-friendly as possible. The back yeah. hatch is going to be 24 by 48, and the front hatch is just, it's huge. Massive, yeah, you showed me inside. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. See, this is like, I'm such an art person. Like, that's what I went to school for, is like oh, yes. art. So anyways, I really, I appreciate all the work that goes into all of this. Oh, you Because it's just, today, then. it's a giant art project. I've never tried these before. I, I, I see. I, I, if I was gone, if I had gone here a little tiny bit earlier, I was gonna stop at the tree over there and bring in a branch. I saw. Yeah, these couple here. So yeah, how do I? Right. And I just eat the whole thing. Did you just grab these off of the tree? Yep. <laughs> You're There's so a whole funny. Farm over here. <laughs> gonna bring these are else really these ready. are breakfast snacks. Break the back part in. Oh, okay. And, and if they're hard enough on the outside, you can just kind of break, and it'll just kind of slip itself off. See, once you once it cracks oh, okay, open, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, then you're golden. And, and the whole the, thing? The whole thing just stick all in your mouth. There'll be one big round seed in the middle, kind of like a like an olive pit. Mmm. That's actually really good. Sometimes they're sweeter than this too. Mmm. Sorry, but it's good. I have fun with it. Throw everything outside. It's all nature. Little seed in the middle. Good man, little seed. That's delicious. I did not expect that at all. You ever had like a? Uh, I've like never a had martini? this. Yeah, they have those. They lychee martinis. These are delicious. Yeah, they're amazing. What? They're amazing. Learn something new every day. Yours are very pretty color. I love that. Yeah, it's going to look so good. I'm so excited. Yours It's going to be the best one today. It's funny. That's it. Your lamination schedule. I'm just going to make it so much lighter. I've been wanting to put your lamination schedule. Really? For so long. And you finally have the... We push here. Again, Lewis. I've been learning everything here from Lewis. So what we end up being is, so our boats, have, like you know, yeah. there are no grills, right? We put the, the, the meat and potatoes yeah. in our lamination and how we do it, our infusion and all that. Yes. We're making the boat strong and light and that's where our money is. And they're so money, solid. We're not putting money in hatches and this and that. Right. That's what, and that's how we keep it cheap. Yeah. Okay. It's going to roll. Yes, sir. We're going to roll. Don't call me, sir. Oh, oh yes, Samantha. Fuck out of here. Smile at you. Want me to dance? I'm not going to school. Yeah, we're still putting this all the stuff together. 16 foot cypress. In the fuel filled event. Carbon canister. This uh -huh. is going to open. It opens this way. It's right. going to have a trolling motor with a power puck on it. So you'll oh, be perfect. able to open it and cool. it'll have a platform and mm -hmm. you can drop your anchor in. This is going to be such a badass gift. The cool. whole way the Islandia came about, uh -huh. I made four skiffs and every time I sold them the person who bought it for me would sell it for twice as much okay and that person would buy it sell for twice as much right. I, was like, I think I have a business here um, I worked for Felix Sabatis okay on his private boat I was the mate he was the CEO of Trinity Yachts he invented the mega yacht right um, he, he did till a business retired he had a 75 uh, motor yacht Hatters mm -hmm. so he's like we're gonna go to Cat K for a couple days. I'm with the stewardess and, and the captain. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, 
Keke is a private island. Mm -hmm. He had a charter for like, they allow you for three days if you want to be a member. He used to be a member a long time there, a long right. time ago. Okay. So the captain's like really sick also, and, and that's when you start hearing COVID in the news, COVID in the news. Right. And he's like, dude, Felix is very old. He has to get a, a shot. He has fluid built up in his lungs. God. Like once a week. He's, yeah, it's, oh my god. So that's he's like, terrible. don't come anywhere near me to the captain. So we got to fill in captain. We go to the cat. Okay. All right. We get there. And all of a sudden, it turns into like, end of the world. Cat, you know, uh, COVID's taking over. People are dying. You know, the whole crazy. He's like, Louis, we're going to die. This and that. He didn't have any medication or anything. So I was like, look, my buddy will bring the medication, but you got to let me go spearfishing for two days. <laughs> You're so and he's funny. like, all right. So my buddy came over. We went. He brought on the medication. Uh, we went down to Orange Cave, went spearfishing for two days. Amazing. Whatever. We come back, my buddy leaves. Trend starts getting really, really, really crazy. Um, and there's a certain family, the Fan Hools there, and they're, they're the wealthiest Cubans in the world. Um, they have their 150 Christensen with the Hell's Bays on the back. Uh, they have a 60-foot like Viking, or 50, with a Maverick on the front. Oh my gosh. Um, so we're there, Living the life. everything's crazy. Uh, they have a doctor that comes to the island every 30 days, a okay. new doctor, because there's only, there's like 40 people who live there. It's yeah. very private. You can't it's, just go there. Right. The doctor that comes brings COVID to the island. Shut Gets up. one of the Bahamians sick. Oh my it turns God. into full Chaos. lockdown. No one's allowed out. One hour a day by yourself. We are on the dock. At the end of the dock is the police department and the customs. So it was full lockdown. Was, uh, the, the other captain had left by then. So it was just me, the stewardess, Felix, and his girlfriend. Felix is like, Louis, um, you see how they have Hell's Bays? I was like, yeah, the richest people, you know, one of the richest people in the world. He's like, okay, so I can't sell your little skiff. It's like, I could sell a bigger boat. That guy, Chris Morton, you know, he's like, yeah. he design a bigger boat for you. He's like, uh -huh. I'll pay for it. I was like, no, Felix, you're not gonna pay for it. So I called Chris, he's like, you know, Louis, this is, I was like, I know it's getting crazy. Will you design a boat for me? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, and I was like, okay. Him and I were going back and forth over like two weeks. Uh -huh. And I would take the, the drawings, I'm like, hey, Felix, what do you think? He's like, oh, I like it, I like it. Okay, so we finalized that. You know, I sent Chris some money, Vimbo, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he, he designed it for me. And, That's uh, so cool. He he finished it up, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna build it. So that the name is Landia. I figured it's South Dade Skiffs, right? Right. South Dade. Islandia is a the last group of island chain um, south of Caesar's Creek. Okay. Yeah. In Dade County, it's the most southern Dade County you can get before right. Monroe County. And it's called Islandia, so Islandia 18. That's perfect. And. Uh, Chris, Chris loved the freaking name, and that's that's how that went. I was like, all right. Um, I had a, a chill coat gun, a wet out gun. I had a, a, a business partner, Cuban Alex. And I called him, I was like, Alex, man, look, when I get back, we gotta build three boats real quick. Uh, we're gonna start selling them, do some stuff. He's like, all right, we'll, we'll do it. Uh -huh. So I was like setting up everything. I'm like, Sean, we need a warehouse. <laughs> Find a warehouse. Yeah. Like, okay, I'll start working on it. We, were, we're, we got some ice cream at Dairy Queen and went drive around. Sean wanted <laughs> to get a warehouse by the falls. And I was like, man, we're not gonna find a place by the falls. Yeah, we're what? not gonna be able to afford a place by the falls. We're driving, we see this for rent sign. I'm like, it's like 11 o'clock at night. I grab the sign. So no <laughs> I'm gonna just up, take this with me. And, uh, so we go look at it. He opens up the bay door and it's like three times the size. I yeah. Like, like, I was gonna try to argue the price down. Like, let's bring it down. We open it up, it's like three times. And I was like, Sean's like, we'll take it. So like, we Sean, go to the owner's house. I'm and, trying to negotiate. Yeah, no, we'll take it. So we go over there and then Sean's like, I don't have any money in my bank account. Louis, write him a check. And I'm like, all right, well, let, let's do it. And yeah. uh, that's how all of that got started. That's but, it's an amazing time. That's crazy. So these, I didn't realize, so the Islandia was kind of one of the first designs that you had originally planned before the South Aid. Yes. Yes. So this was actually like legit. Um, I gave uh, Chris, you know, some of my request. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I was like, look, I want something for the 21st century. Right. It has a lot of dead rise. It's good to 12 degrees. That has lifting strikes. Yeah. Um, that pulls trying to mix it all together, yeah. you know? And so that's where he came up with uh, the plumb bow. So you get the displacement so it'll sit level with two right. guys on the front and a trolling motor and a guy on the back. A lot of these boats, it's a box. Right. It's like a box on the side. Like, I do not want a box. It gives it so much more dimension. Um, clean flow. Yeah. And that is, that's what Chris designed. If you look, so Chris invented this. This is the spray strake, right? Okay, yeah. So, so when you're running on plane, the water hits this and then it's knocked down. Right. right. Because this is round, water will stick to it, right? So okay. before of it, it hits this and gets thrown out, right? Right. When you come off plane, 
this sits below, so it doesn't make noise in the mm -hmm. water line, and it also turns into a keel to help you pull straight. True. I mean, we'll be in chop, no problem. Like, we hardly get wet, to yes. be honest. Like, it's a very, very dry boat. This is the only one, we have a four inch wide chime here, right. with a lifting strike. Um, and the one thing, like I said, I decided to go with a sharp edge here instead of a rounded one because just so it's faster yeah i want to go faster my my main thing with this is to uh want to get out to the fish we'd always fish john boats and stuff i wish i had a skiff like this when i was a kid <laughs> right. i wish um so, so cool. i i was like all right i'll make a skiff right yeah okay you know i could do this on my mom's patio yeah <laughs> so it's perfect um with my buddy q and alex we started making consoles and stuff his his uh, uncle worked for a boat company mm -hmm. so he kind of told us what to do um so we made a plug for a console, made a mold, pulled it out. Like, yeah, we you know we figured out draft angles and stuff. You have to have yeah. negatives, okay. So I was like, I'm gonna build a boat. My whole idea was like, let's build consoles, we get enough money to build a boat. Right. And I was like, it's gonna take too long. Let's just build a boat. So I started. I ran on Microskiff, and they said if somebody built a boat like the East Cape Gladesman, uh -huh. right, but left it not finished, right, with all the hatches and right, stuff. Right. Exactly. And, and sold it for. Five thousand dollars, right? They uh -huh. make a killing. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm gonna make uh, a killing. That'll be me. <laughs> I'm gonna make a killing. Okay. So I studied a lot of pictures of East Cape Gladesman. I've never seen one. Okay. Right? That's where I was inspired on the bow. Yeah. Right. Um, but I knew they were 18 feet long and they were like two feet wide. Yeah. It's like I wanted something. I call it. It's like a, a Gladesman, but with testicles. Right. <laughs> I have to cross Biscayne Bay, and it gets choppy and dicey. And, yeah. Um, to say the least. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna do 16 feet. Because that's about the length you want to span waves. So right. You're be contacting one, mm -hmm. sitting on one at the end of another. Correct. The problem is with all these micro skips, they get like 13 feet. Because I had a 13 whaler, they don't Finish. span waves. So you yeah, stick everyone. Yeah. So I was like, all right, 16 feet. So me and my dad uh, just started cardboard template. Like, all right, how does it look? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we do station by station, then we just like put a piece of rope on it. Right. And I just kind of came up with the shape. And then we strip planked it, cut plywood, put it on there, puttied it, That's so and it had cool. the shape. And then my other buddy's like, Luz, put some more V on it, dude. This thing's never, it's gonna be like a Carolina skiff. <laughs> I, know, I grew so up on a Carolina enough. skiff. <laughs> yeah. So we put some more V on it. I'm like, okay. And I made this funky pocket transom. I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, okay. And I made a plug. I was mm -hmm. making a mold for a boat that I'd never tested. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You gotta this. start somewhere. <laughs> so I just made it, I made it thin. We made it, popped it out. Um, I made, a boat off of it. We okay. pulled it out and I just hand laid it. Yeah. You know, um, I read through all of Chris Morjohn's, all of his things, yeah. man, all of his stuff. I was like stalking the guy on the internet. Not <laughs> actually, but so I would work five days a week to get the money. Um, I'd go spearfishing one day. Yeah. And then I'd work Sunday all day. On the boats. Yeah. So. And what were you doing before full time at this point? Were you still on the yachts? No, I wasn't even on the, um, uh, I was working, doing long lines on a crab boat. Oh, that's, I think I did hear that. Friends. Yeah. So we'd have two and a half miles Shana of line me on about deck. That. Dude, that's a, hard a work. A grind. Um, so I did. Okay, so you're working your ass off between that and then And then the I would boat. do side jobs too. Yeah. So I went with Ulysses, uh, my buddy, he's a fishing uh, yeah. guide. And I never met him before, but my buddy knew him. And I was like, Ulysses, uh, you don't know me, Dave knows you. Um, I built this skiff and I want to try it out and see if it's any good. Yeah. I was like, okay. So, we, I mean, at Black Point, we go on it. Um, and I, I didn't have a platform or anything on it yet. So, I was like, hey, do you have a push pole? Because I don't have one. Can you yeah. bring it? Is yeah. It bring it? <laughs> Can I borrow it? So, we go, we start push pulling. He's like, Louie, man, this thing this thing pulls dead straight. He's like, dude. And he goes, a couple turns, he's like, yeah, I think you got a winner. But he's like, look, man, you yeah. got to make a, a platform. Right. Like, All right. So, I made a platform out of two by fours and plywood. Uh -huh. And then we just, I threw bolted it through the, <laughs> That's the deck. And so we put it on there, he gets up there, he's push pulling it. He's like, this thing pulls like a dream. I'm like, so I did a good job. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is like, hey, look, talk to Chris Moore, John. Uh -huh. right? He told me that before. I was like, okay, he's like, he's in the Keys. Okay. He's in town, he lives in the Bahamas. And I was like, all right, so the only way to get in contact was to email him. Okay, so yeah. Email him and I got him like, I didn't act like I wanted to buy skiff plans, but right. that's why I emailed him through the skiff plans. He right. sells plans. I was like, hey man, I got this skiff and I'd really love you to look at it, dude. You know, this and that. And he's like, uh -huh. um, he's like, well, I'm in the keys, so yeah, come on down and bring the drawings. Yeah. So I go down there and he's like, you bought the boat with the drawings. I was like, yeah, I don't know how to draw. 
<laughs> he's I'm like, well, drawings. I just who built designed it. the boat? I was like, I designed the boat. I just built it. <laughs> and then he's like, well, who built it? I built it. And the first thing is, hey, you want a job? <laughs> yeah, right. Because he's like, I got some friends with it. I was like, no, 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 I don't want a job. And I was explaining to him the, the thing. So that was the only time I ever met Floyd, too. Okay. Floyd was working at the shop down there, and him and Chris were there. Yeah. Um, and Floyd walked out, looked at the boat, and, you know, what's up? He walked back inside. So Chris was like, look, um, it was this pocket transom I made. Uh-huh. For the little boats, I had no idea. You don't need it. And it was like crazy big. Yeah. Right? So he's like, you have to make the new part, cut the mold, put it in there. I was like, all right, perfect. So he's looking down the side of the boat. He's like, dude, this seems dead straight. I'm like, yeah. He's like, this has got to pull like a dream. I'm like, yeah. It does. Yeah. And <laughs> so the awesome. keel, Yeah. he's a sailboater. Okay. Okay, so I was like, I was thinking about taking the keel off. He's like, no, 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 no. Don't take the keel off. Don't take the keel off. Yeah. Okay, so I'll leave the keel. Um, and uh, I tried to give him some money. He's like, no, I can't take your money. I haven't done anything for you. I was like, what do you mean? You, you just help, yeah. You, and he's like, no, I can't take any money. So it was cold that morning. I took a sweater from him, took $200, put in a sweater, <laughs> rolled it up, and I threw it in the truck through the window of his buddy's truck. And I was like, buy your wife something nice. <laughs> On that skip, I've probably pushed Polo South Eight skip more than anybody. You're a close second, though. <laughs> I was um, gonna say, Gary and I have definitely put in a lot of hours <laughs> on that so, pole. So, if you you've noticed, like, you can get going if the bottom's hard. I can get going seven miles an hour. You can. With a guy oh yeah. The front. Let me know whatever skip you can do that. Uh, yeah. The gladesman, you could probably do it. Yeah. Um, there. There's not mean, much competition. Yeah. Not for the, what, like the South Eight skiff is able to do. For what it, exactly for what it what it's meant. That's why we're on like haul number freaking forty four. Um, That's I never nuts. thought I'd get to this. So, you know, like I said, I built and designed on my mom's patio. One of these. Islandia, Cyprus. Things are going. So as Chris has always been kind of like a mentor, go-to person to be able to ask anything. Yes. At this point. So like, when when. Ulysses told me, he was like, look, uh, Luce, you got to meet this guy, Chris Moore, John. I yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. Um, and I started, you know, annoying him. Yeah. Um, he invented the pulling skiff. Right. Okay, he invented That's why I know he's skiff. like the so person to I'm know. If I'm trying to make a pulling skiff, uh, I'm going to go to the source. Right? Exactly. Um, and he's a very, very humble man. And he's sharp. And he taught me a lot. A lot of his drawings, the whole application for pulling skiff yeah. is from sailboats he's a sailboater he's a sailboat designer yeah so it was like loose thing about this you're trying to travel at sailboat speeds or less because you're push pull true yeah it he's makes like, sense so you design the bottom like a sailboat sailboats trying to have the least amount of drag right and that's why you ever seen a sailboat's a round stern exactly yeah that's why he makes his sterns round so they don't they don't spin water off it's less drag okay and it helps them turn and obviously between the south day the cypress and the islandia like do you have a a f you obviously design more, more so design the South Dade, but like, are you kind of leaning towards like a favorite now between the different holes? So obviously, I want this one. Um, <laughs> to be I like the Cypress too because it's fun. It's it's usable. They've all exceeded expectations. Now that's amazing. The other thing is, you know, like top, top, top tier on the pulling skiffs, they're using the same core we use. Okay. The same exact brand, same exact price. Right. But they're charging a lot more money than I am. Yeah, just so, just to so upcharge it. Our margins are very tight, right? Um, but compared to pretty much every other option out there, I mean, who's charging way more money? It's just like, why wouldn't you go with the South Dade when you're getting just as good, if not better, of a product? The value. It's the value is there a hundred percent. Yeah. I want to keep the South Dade skiff going. Yeah. But my favorite South Dade skiff would probably be yours. The one that we're making? Yeah, because it's got a cord haul. Yeah, it's I'm excited. It's going to be lighter. Um, my favorite was the pirate ship before that because it was cord. So yeah. this one will just have like a lot more stuff. I'm excited. Um, I'm so excited. Thank you good. again, Louis. Good. I really do appreciate um, it. You're welcome, obviously. All right, YouTube. So that's going to wrap up today's video. We are at the SoFlo Boat Show this weekend, and we had an absolutely awesome show. Tons of people coming to say hi. So if you're one of them, thank you so much for stopping by. If you guys are interested in the South Aid skiff models between the 16 foot South Aid, the 16 Cypress, or the 18 foot Islandia, they are taking new orders. So I'm gonna include all their information below. Also, I'll keep you guys posted on my brand new build so you guys can see it firsthand on my social media channels as it comes together. But otherwise, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.